Hey saddle hunters, thanks for tuning in to another video here on the Saddle Hunting channel on YouTube. If you would do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and like this video, it really helps me out a lot. Today's video, we are going to bring you another tree saddle review. I get asked all the time, hey Spencer, have you ever looked at such and such a saddle, or have you ever tried such and such a saddle? Well, this saddle we're going over today is the one that I have gotten asked about the most, and that is the Cruiser XC. Well, I finally had the opportunity to try out the Cruiser, and I'm gonna give you my review. If you guys have kind of followed my videos, you know I've used most of the saddles on the market, and I've kind of been using two panel saddles a lot recently. I've just found them to be a whole lot more comfortable than most of the single panel saddles that I've tried. Single panel saddles, I just found I was, I was not getting the comfort that I wanted in most of them, and a lot of them were just really bulky, and I didn't like the bolt factor of them. So I started using two panels because a lot of them were more streamlined, and they were more comfortable. Well guys, in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why the Cruiser XC may be the saddle that has changed my mind about single panel saddles. Let's get into it. All right guys, so I've got my Cruiser laid out here on the table and I just wanna kinda of give you a tabletop review, show you a lot of its features. Let me just start by saying that the stitching on this saddle is excellent. I would put it in the top top two or three companies that I've seen, hardly any freight ends, it's just done really, really well. If we start here at the top, you can see Cruiser is unique in that they've included two rows of Molly webbing. One of those rows is sewed extremely tight and really it's, it's nice because the top of that kind of sits underneath the top strap that creates your bridge loop and so there's a little bit of, of tension there when you put your strap pouch through and I'll show you that but but I think that really helps to keep it tight. The second strap ha is is looser and so regardless of what style molly you are using you have an attachment method for it. Let me just show you these are perfect for you guys who like kind of gear attachments here's just a regular old carabiner plenty of room to put carabiners in through those holes. So I really, really like that. But I also like to run tethered pouches. This is just your typical tethered ES pouch with your tri-glide tri attachments. So let me show you this. I like to come back, you can see the waist belt starts there. If you come and attach your pouch further than the waist belt, you'll get a little bit of sag. But on this saddle, there's only really two slots past the end of the waist belt, so it's not a huge deal. So if we start on this second loop, I think we will be fine. But you can see, it's pretty tight. You just wiggle that down through there, and, and it attaches really easily. In my experience using this and field testing it, these have not popped out at all. And I've had a lot of saddles with tight molly webbing like this where these have still rocked out. But, but I think this does a good job of holding it very, very tightly. So you can see how well that fits on there. It just gives you a frame of reference as far as size goes too. I really, really like that molly webbing. Let me continue to show you some of the features of this saddle. Cruiser's got really nice lineman loops. They are vertically oriented lineman loops. They've got a kind of a, a red reinforcement on the inside. Really easy to see in the dark. I wouldn't call it reflecting, but, but my flashlight picks that up really, really well. They're stiff, they're not super wide, which makes them easier to clip in. I like the lineman belt loops a lot. You can see right there at the point of the lineman belt is the buckle for the leg straps. These leg straps use the same buckles that we've seen on a couple other saddles. The Tree Hopper Ultimate uses these and so does the Covert Light from Trophy Line, but nice affirmative click. They cinch down, they don't, they don't move, easy to clip off. These clips don't weigh a whole lot and they're just easy to use. I much prefer them over G G hooks, so that's really nice. Cruiser's got webbing keepers on them. And in my opinion, they're just done perfect. They're not uh, too tight. You know, I've seen some saddles where they really bunch them up, and I just don't like that. You know, call me OCD or whatever you want, but but these are done perfect. I really like the webbing keepers on the leg straps. They're non-removable, attached right there at the bottom of the saddle. 
Let's talk a little bit about weight and sizing. This is a size one. It comes in at one pound, nine ounces. If you go to a size two or three, it is going to weigh a little bit more because the size differences are based on the frame of the saddle. So the larger the saddle, the bigger the circumference and the top to bottom measurement on the saddles. I talked to Chad over at Cruiser and the size ones are 12 inches from the top to the bottom. The size twos are 14 inches along that same measurement and the size threes are 16 inches. So that should give you a helpful frame of reference. The pleat is an excellent pleat. This is the best pleat I have used in the saddle world yet. It stays closed. I don't find it opening unintentionally and it's a large pleat. And the nice thing about it is I find that I can independently open each side of the pleat. So if I will only want to open it halfway, I can do that and, and it stays there, which is really nice. And I'll show you that on the in-tree review. But if you only open the bottom half of the pleat, this saddle adds two and a half inches. If you open the top half of the pleat, you gain five inches from top to bottom length. So that's, that's really nice. And you can see how easily that just wants to spring back into place. This is probably the most rigid mesh I have seen in a saddle, and I think it is excellent. Uh, when you have mesh that is not so stiff, the pleat tends to be floppier, and it just doesn't work as well. So I really think they've done a good job choosing the mesh on this saddle. Let me flip it over now, and we'll show you the other side of it. Not a whole lot going on, but here's the underside of the saddle. The waist belt has got a tri-glide on one side, which helps to hold the buckle securely. A lot of adjustment. The other side just has a, has a hook, so you can make on-the-fly adjustments very quickly with the buckle. I like that feature a lot. One thing that, that Chad told me was that no matter what size you go with, the waist belt and the leg straps are all the same length. So. If you're a really big guy, you might run into the upper end of that, but, but they can do custom length belts for you, so keep that in mind. I think they've done a good job with the belts. I've tried some, some saddles lately. They just have belts that are excessively long, and so this, this is nice. It doesn't leave you a whole lot of extra length to, to manage and to deal with, so I appreciate that. The bridge loops are, are done well. They're very stiff. They're reinforced extremely well. The stitching is good. I'm going to talk a little bit about the different bridge options here in a minute, but I've been very impressed with this Cruiser Adjustable Am Steel Bridge. So that's the inside of the saddle, made in the United States, so you got to like that. And one of, I think, the most significant features, but one that can very easily be overlooked, is the shape of this saddle. And I'm gonna slide it up here. You can see on my table I've got a line. So that's just a square edge for reference. If I take the saddle and slide it up there, this saddle has a curve to it, okay? So it's got a pretty pronounced curve to it. And that curve, in my opinion, is what makes this the most comfortable single panel saddle that I have ever sat in. That curve does a tremendous amount to relieve any potential for hip pinch. And I think it's a just a design feature that they knocked out of the park on this saddle that you don't see on every single experience expandable pleated saddle on the market. So props to them. That's an excellent, excellent feature. So I'm going to put it on, show you how it wears, and we'll do our full in the field review. So far I am very, very impressed with not only the build quality, but the comfort of the Cruiser XC. When you purchase a Cruiser saddle, you have the option to choose a couple upgrades. And one of those upgrades is an upgraded buckle that is ANSI rated. So I have both buckle options here. On the bottom, you have the standard Cruiser buckle. And on the top is the upgraded buckle from Austri Alpen. This is a Cobra buckle. I'm bringing it in here so you can see it a little bit closer. That's made of 7075 aluminum. It's CNC machined. It has an 18 kilonewton braking strength in the closed loop configuration like you would use it on a saddle. 
and this buckle is guaranteed to not have any one-sided opening even under load so phenomenal buckle the big deal is the ANSI rating there are a lot of guys that are looking for that feature to upgrade to this option is an extra $19 from Cruiser here's their standard buckle this buckle is not ANSI rated, but it does have some weight ratings on it. Matter of fact, in the closed loop configuration, this has a higher rating. Hopefully you can see that of 24 kilonewtons. Both buckles are work very similarly. You can see you just grab the tabs on this buckle and it opens up. In order to tighten it, it tightens just from the one side only. And you can see it's very easy to pull pull the strap through and feed it back, but once it gets a little tension on it, you can see it cinches down by that plate on the top just slightly shifting toward the back. So that's kind of how this buckle functions. The Cobra buckle is similar, adjusts just as easily, and then of course there's a plate inside there that shifts toward the back to, to keep it in place when it's under tension. So both of them very similar as far as function goes. The big difference is the ANSI rating on the Cobra buckle as opposed to this just kind of more generic buckle and this one's guaranteed to not have one-sided opening under load. So hope that's helpful if you're thinking about the upgrade. So one of the options when you buy this Cruiser XC that you can upgrade is the bridge. If you don't decide to upgrade the bridge, it comes with, I believe this is an eight millimeter rope bridge that is just simply tied on at each end. And I reached out to Chad, he told me that they tie this on with a bowline with a Yosemite finish. So obviously this is not an adjustable bridge as it's tied on both sides. You could untie it and retie it to adjust length if you wanted, but it's a fixed length bridge about 32 inches from knot to knot the way I've got it tied. So you could probably give or take an inch either direction. If you decide you wanna go with their upgraded bridge option, what you're gonna get is a removable, adjustable AM steel bridge. You can see this is just girth hitched on the first side. The second side, there's a prusik that goes around the main line of the bridge, and then it is girth hitched twice, kind of like in a prusik format on the second bridge loop. So this goes out to about 36 inches of adjustment. What I like about this is it can adjust all the way down until it hits the second knot. So you can basically go from, you know, one inch all the way out to 36 inches, which is really, really nice. This is a full berry am steel, which is fantastic for this application. It's tied and then it's got some shrink wrap on the end of it. So finished off really, really nicely. One of the advantages, other than length adjustment that this gives you, is that because it's girth hitched on both sides, you can adjust it up and down the bridge. So you can set it there and you'll get more pressure along the top strap. You can move it here. You'll have evenly distributed pressure. If you set both of the girth hitches down toward the bottom, you'll get more pressure along this bottom loop. So really, really a lot of added comfort by going with the adjustable am steel bridge option. And I would recommend that you do so. All right guys, so I'm outside and before we get on the tree here, I just wanna show you kinda of how this saddle wears. The saddle is really light, so the weight of it is not something to be a concern when you're gonna be wearing it. But I wanted to show you, I've hooked up the leg straps just in the front like they're designed to do, but you can see when you do that, you kinda of get this bunchy feeling in the back. It kinda of pulls underneath you, even if you have these straps loosened, you just kinda, of, you can feel it kinda of on, your, on your butt there. So. Most comfortable way that I've found to wear this saddle for the walk-in is to unbuckle those waist or those leg straps and run them just behind your leg. So run them around the side there, buckle them down, and then take the bridge and just pull it tight. The nice thing about this bridge is you can pull it all the way tight so that basically the two bridge loops touch one another, take the end, wrap it around, tuck it in, and that is super streamlined. The saddle pulls right down onto your body, no flapping around. The lineman loops are right there on the point of your hip. They're very far forward, nice and nice and open, not real, uh, they don't collapse, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Some of the, the newer ones I've seen are pretty small. These are fairly wide, 
not too big though that they're in the way so I like those a lot but you can see that it sits just above the top of the bottom of my butt so I don't have anything hitting me in the lower legs which is nice and to walk it's just really comfortable you know no leg restriction at all with this saddle so that's an easy way to walk in really streamlined I like that a lot that's a feature I look for in most of my saddles so I'm gonna put it on the tree show you guys how I've found to use it in the tree all right saddle hunters so I'm here in the cruiser XC and I've got it hooked up I like my bridge you know 20 to 24 inches it's probably about 24 right now and the nice thing about this saddle is you've got a lot of adjustment you can you can adjust it to any length that you want so play around with that it makes a big difference I start with it kind of right in the middle of the lineman loops and I find that works very well I don't think this saddle is super sensitive to the placement of the bridge on the bridge loops of course you can adjust it up and down to change the pressure points but some saddles are very particular about where they have to be in order to get good comfort this one is not that particular so I really like that about it but let me just show you how I would lean in this saddle I typically loosen the waist belt up a little bit when I get in the tree so I have freedom to, to move the saddle around and this is an easy waist belt to move so I like that I would typically put it just just above my belt line and that gives me the ability to lean back in it very easily. This saddle, when you, when you put your weight into this, more than any other I've tried, it just feels like the, the pressure is, is consistent across the saddle. And I haven't had that before. A lot of times you feel pressure, especially mesh saddles, on the straps in particular. But in this saddle, the pressure is very evenly distributed all the way around, so I really, really like that. And this thing's super comfortable to lean in. What I've been doing, and what I like a lot, is that you can open up one half of this pleat at a time. You don't have to open up the whole thing. It's very comfortable closed, but if I take it and I just grab the bottom of the saddle and pull the bottom half of the pleat out and leave the top half closed, that to me has been really, really comfortable when I'm leaning. Right now I've got a little more pressure kind of on this bottom strap. And for leaning, I would probably want it to be a little bit shifted more up into my back. So I'm just going to lean forward, take the bridge on the bridge loops, move it up maybe a quarter of an inch. And oh man, what a big difference that makes. A lot more back support now. So play around with that. This saddle really allows you a lot of customization as far as where the pressure is coming from and, and how comfortable it is. So that's really, really a nice feature. And that's one of the reasons I would recommend getting the Amsteel adjustable bridge as an upgrade on this saddle. So this for me would work really, really great for leaning. I don't feel any hip pinch at all in this saddle. You guys know that I don't just test saddles and throw them on, on the channel here. I like to take them out, I like to hunt with them a handful of times in a number of different trees for different lengths of time to see how comfortable they are. And this saddle, because of that curved design at the, I think at the top and the good distribution, I found it just really comfortable. It, I don't get pressure up here at the top of my hips. And that's one of the main reasons I kind of have gone away from single panel saddles for a long time was because I was feeling pressure like right here. Well, in this saddle, I, I haven't gotten it at all. So that's a big plus in my book to this saddle. So this is probably how I would lean. Works really good, but I don't lean a whole lot. I like to sit. And so for me, this was gonna be the real test. Does this saddle sit well? So let me let out a little bit of length here and I go to sit down in the saddle. I've found that when I sit in this saddle, I like to open the pleat the whole way and bring the saddle a little bit farther underneath my butt. So. There it is, it's open the whole way. And that, guys, is incredibly comfortable for sitting. I, I don't get any hip pinch at all. The pressure's really well distributed. I feel supported. And it, I mean, you could, just, you could just lean in and take a nap with this thing. It's just fantastic for sitting, guys. Probably the best single panel saddle I've ever used, especially when it comes to comfort sitting and leaning. You guys know I liked the Arrow Hunter Kestrel Flex, the original one, great for sitting. Not as great for leaning. This one blows it away in both categories. 
excellent for sitters and excellent for leaners. So I think this is a, a fantastic saddle, wears really, really well in the tree. And you can see it, it sits below on the lower half of my body, I guess. So I've got easy mobility to shoot around. This Amsteel bridge slides through the carabiner very, very nicely. And the nice thing about the single panel saddle is because it's got more material, you feel more supported. So if I were to lean out and take a really goofy shot, I don't feel like I'm gonna tip out of the tree. You know, I've got, I've got good support in my lower body. So I really like that feature about this saddle. It's excellent guys. The lineman loops forward, easy to access. That red um, piece of fabric that's stitched on the inside makes it very easy to see in the dark. This is just an excellent saddle. Let me demonstrate to you how easy it is to fold the pleat back up after you have had it extended. All you gotta do, take a little weight off, push up on the inside and then pull up from the bottom and that pleat closes and right back to its starting position. So very easy to feel. You push up and then you pull up and that's all there is to getting the plate back to its closed position. So I want to conclude the review here by showing you guys how you can use this saddle and why it's so good for one stick climbing. So let me show you that now. All right, so a lot of people are getting into one stick climbing. And when I got this saddle, I got to thinking that it would probably be a fantastic saddle to climb the one stick method with. So I'm gonna show you guys some advantages that the cruiser gives you when you're climbing with a one stick. All right, saddle hunters, so i am got my one stick on the tree, I'm making the initial climb, I'm on the aiders, about ready to transition to the step. Now you can see when you're one stick climbing, there is inherent slack in the tether rope, okay? And one of the things I love about the cruiser is that the bridge doesn't have any metal on it and as a whole the saddle doesn't have a whole lot of metal on it so when my safeguard or you might be using a different kind of a sender or friction hitch is is loose and there's slack like this even just the carabiner there's not much metal on the saddle and in the bridge setup that can be clanged into and make noise so that's one of the things I like let me climb up here and I'll show you another feature that I really like about this saddle for one stick climbing. There's two other things I really like about the Cruiser XC for one stick climbing. I really like that I can make the bridge as short as I want. I love a short bridge for one stick climbing. The other thing is that when I go to sit down into it, because of that pleat, there's just so much support underneath my butt. So when I sit into it, to remove the stick off the tree, there's just tons of support. You can see it makes it really easy. Pop my stick out and to advance it up the tree. Feel really supported the whole time. Just super comfortable to hang here while you're getting the stick set up for your next climb. Also, rappelling just feels really comfortable in this because there's so much support. So long story short guys, I think the Cruiser XC is a fantastic option for those of you that are climbing one stick or are considering climbing one stick. I was using the brand new Shikar one stick with the Monarch platform on top. We're gonna do a review of this here pretty soon, so stay tuned to the channel. But let me give you a few closing thoughts here about the Cruiser XC. Well, saddle hunters, that's my review of the Cruiser XC. I don't know why I waited so long to try this saddle out. It is a fantastic saddle. It's by far the best single panel saddle that I have ever tried. It packs down nice, it's streamlined, it's lightweight. There's not a lot of metal on it to clank around and to make noise. It provides good support in the tree. It's excellent when you're one climbing. And, and I think it leans very well and it sits very well. So 
high praise for this saddle. But the only complaint I would have is probably related to the waist belt. The waist belt is a little bit flimsy and can have a tendency to get twisted, but at the end of the day, I don't think that should be a deal breaker for anybody. So if you're in the market, maybe you're a new saddle hunter and you're just overwhelmed by all the choices out there, I've hardly ever seen a complaint about the Cruiser XC and in my testing it's a fantastic option so I don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for a new saddle by picking up the Cruiser XC. Thanks again for watching, I appreciate all your guys' support, stay tuned, we're going to be bringing more to you.